Friends, welcome back to the Wild at Heart podcast here in the week of November 1st. Happy November, Alan. Thank you. It's, <laughs> this this fall is flying by. Right? Yeah, it's it's officially fall, folks. If you <laughs> if you've been living in a little bit of uh, denial on that like I have, yes. clinging to the last glories of of an Indian summer. It's fall, everybody. And we have something really beautiful for you this week. The, the title of this podcast is The Beauty of Redemption. So many stories come into our lives, come through correspondence or a phone call or a text from a friend, like breathtaking stories. Yes that we don't often get a chance to share with our friends and our listeners. We know your hearts are so in this, everybody. We know they are. And so we've got some encouragement and some beauty for you. What happened was a couple of weeks ago, we circled up as a team. We do this once or twice a year. We call it Vision Day, right. but that that's a little more glorious sounding than it. It's very, it's a team huddle. It's a, it's a chance for us to kind of step back and go, how are we doing? How's our culture, you know, as, a, as an organization? Mm -hmm. How's our work? And yeah, what's on the horizon? You know, we kind of do that. And we were talking about the importance of identity, like who we are, where we are in God's kingdom, what we've been entrusted with. Yes. And so the staff started riffing on stories. I, I got, I prompted them and got them going on. What have you been hearing from our allies, from our friends, from our listeners? And it was amazing. Oh, it was breathtaking. And some of those stories, even though we're a relatively small team, everybody's moving so fast in their part of the the ministry that it was good for our souls to hear what something that Morgan had heard and something Bart just was a part of at a lunch and Yeah, something and Karen got on social, something Jamie received in correspondence. Yeah, I mean, so beautiful. So here's what we did. I I knew this was gonna happen, and so I, I recorded it. Uh, it's, now, it's not like a super great recording, but here here is our team huddle yes. swapping stories of how Jesus is working in the hearts and lives of people. And I think you're going to find this really rich. Yeah. We're just going to we're just going to play this for you and then jump back in at the end with some thoughts. Here's one that comes through the Anson's Patreon channel. I'm sure you get tons of messages showing appreciation for what you and the rest of the Wild at Heart team do. But if you can bear one more, what a lifesaver a life giver to be more specific. I spent good chunks of this past summer hiding away in the garage, making birdhouses, listening to the podcasts. I've loved the Wild at Heart material for years, but it's different when it comes from your own age group, you know? Mm -hmm. Long story short, they've had a brutal past couple of years. He goes on to say about how his wife had this heart attack like symptoms and he was washing her hair and carrying her around the house. Mm -hmm. A couple months later, they have their first miscarriage mm -hmm. due to a molar pregnancy, which is where your body starts to grow a tumor. They have to do chemo if it gets worse. They finally get the all clear again after six or seven months, but it's super rare, only to have the exact same thing happen. I have know. another molar pregnancy, which is about a one in two million chance. Mm -hmm. And the world, their church and their friends just didn't have words. Didn't, didn't connect. Their families got weird. He had two brothers who had successful pregnancies. They tried starting a uh, group for grieving at church and they got, not right now. If more people start grieving, we can do it. <laughs> Which is total garbage answer and super backwards. I can't even tell you how wide our eyes were open this year in many ways. So he goes on to talk about just how much he retreated and retreated. And then it was the suffering podcast that came through the Wild Heart channel and the Unsuds channel and the one on trauma with Dan that felt like all of a sudden they began to have eyes on their story. Um, let's see here. I used to be really into adventure stuff, but I've let all of that go. And I was reminded that this is the good stuff that isn't always easy to come by. We bring so much life when you get at it. 
I feel like I'm getting back into myself after being lost for a couple of years. And he goes on and says, all that to say, thank you for the content you do out there. It's bringing life to people. I'm example A. When my wife gifted this subscription to me, she said, these are your people and you're few and far between these days. Oh. Oh, so beautiful. I received an email this morning. Um, this is a short one, but just speaks to the, the movement in people's hearts to share the message. I, it, the first contact was yesterday. He was just asking for a refund for the 10 pack of books he ordered because um, he couldn't really afford it anyway. And I felt God say, refund him and give him the books still. So he responded to that this morning saying he went to the Band of Brothers boot camp based around this book, and it's changed his life. He's since given his two copies of Wild at Heart Away and more men needed in this area. My goal is to start my own men's group and grow something in my area. So I'm thrilled to pay this forward. Thank you. Right. Mm -hmm. We have an ally that's been in Southern California and. He came here as a man that he could not answer the question, or he did not have the answer, I have what it takes. And this message gave him that answer, restored his life. He went back, restored his, his marriage, and uh, he began to walk with God. And so we were talking the other day. So in Southern California, he's done 21 boot camps. Wow. What? 21 boot camps. The, the last one just ended last weekend. 140 guys. 41 churches were represented. I was raised Catholic. Spent over 15 years studying the Bible at CBS, Community Bible Study, where five of those years were in leadership. 15 months ago, my husband of 37 years died after a short battle with cancer. My relationship with Jesus was rocked, to put it mildly. On May 24th, 2021, a coworker gave me a copy of Beautiful Outlaw. This changed everything. Since then, I have purchased and given away 40 copies of this book. I think that because of COVID, the forced isolation and all the other crazy things happening in this world, people are starving to hear the truth about who Jesus really is and what that really means in their lives. Beautiful Outlaw blows open all the crazy limits that we put on God and restores our hope in being able to have a real and impactful relationship with the God of the universe. Thank you. Thank you for obediently listening to God's call and writing this life-changing book. It should be required reading for every believer so they can fully walk in whatever calling our amazing Jesus has on their lives. Yay. Like, like, to, like even just to slow that story uh, down and go, she, she lost her husband of 37 years? Like, wait, what? Right as the pandemic was about to hit? No. And then it rocks her life with God? And then a coworker gives her a beautiful outlaw? And she gives 40 copies away? So what happened between reading and 40 copies, right? right? Like something exquisite has and taken place. There. That was less than six months ago that she got her first copy. Oh my no. goodness. Oh, Sorry, just... five, five months ago. <laughs> yeah. Wow. We jumped around a football game out in Lamar, which is Eastern Plains, almost in Kansas, a super small rancher town, um, kind of a yesterday town. And... Um, and so I was dropping off his football team and, and I have a buddy down there, uh, CPW biologist. He's like, you know, Otto Leopold, a daughter with a severe handicap. And so he's just a, a hero. I hadn't seen him in years. So dropped the kids off for football and I have an hour before the game. So I just said, Hey, I'm going to hook up, get dinner. And, um, so I'm just sitting down in this little, just classic Lamar. It's like Italian restaurant. You're getting pad thai, but it tastes like soy sauce. <laughs> you're like, it's the only gig in town. It's just like, where? I feel like I'm in a foreign country. And we're swapping stories. And then he just said, hey, I have to thank you guys. You know, he said, you sponsored me for a boot camp four years ago.
And I like barely even recalled that. You know, it's just one of those moments of Polly Alex. I think this is one of our guys. He said, so four years ago, I came back from boot camp. I felt like the Holy Spirit said, I, I want you to pastor these men. And so he identified 20 leaders in Lamar. He's born and raised Lamar. 20 leaders. And he said, I started cooking dinner for them on Thursday nights. He said, I've cooked dinner for 10 to 20 guys every Thursday night and walked them through the Wild Heart Message. Mm-hmm. He said, I've led two basics for leaders in Lamar, mm-hmm. led them through becoming a king, through Father by God. And I'm just sitting here, I mean, you know, CPW, hat, shirt, like, rancher. And we're just like, look at it. It's holy. holy. And I'm just picturing this little daughter. And like, just that is enough. And he's pastoring this rural community in this message, all volunteer. And we're resourcing him. And that's the fruit of a boot camp four years ago. And wow. no idea. Wow. Yes. Just a short one from yesterday. Just late in the afternoon, I blasted the Becoming a King experience, and someone on Instagram said, it's so good. We've got 20 guys going through it right now, and hearts are being restored. It's not usually the kind of message I see the day we put something out there, but, you know, (laughs) there it is. People are, someone said earlier, like, there is a hunger for the content that's coming out of Wild Heart, and and I I see that all the time. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. A friend whose who's, uh, son, young son, suddenly died. And um, at the service, she and her husband asked for copies of All Things New and gave one out to everybody who wanted one. And so many of his friends didn't know Jesus. And so many of them do now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. While captivating was going on, some pals were leading basics throughout the British Isles, and one of our dear friends hosted one. I think about 25 guys came. It was a phenomenal weekend. He came back just absolutely glowing, incredible reports of the power of it. But then he shared that the big joy for me was he brought like a lifetime friend who doesn't know Jesus. And this guy gave his life to God during basic. And then they all went to the church that Sunday night. He was baptized. I I just fell on my knees in the kitchen just weeping over that. Let me, I'm just reading. I mean, there's a stack here, you guys, of 300 Mm -hmm. from um, captivating events. Two weeks ago, I had no idea I was coming here. I have been battling severe suicidal thoughts and depression. I was given this weekend trip as an alternative to a mental hospital. Mm -hmm. This weekend has given me fresh eyes and a hope that what God says about me is true. This weekend saved my life, literally. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All glory to God. Mm -hmm. Another one. This has completely transformed my life from a broken woman to a heart full of the love of God. I could just uh, read for the next half hour. Okay, some more. There aren't sufficient words to describe what you awakened and broke off me, every single one of you. Bless you 100 billion. (laughs) Every sacrifice, every sacrifice to do this great work. Awakened me to the great I am. There's another one. Uh, Here's an experience I had during free time. On Sunday, my father took me on a daddy-daughter date. It was everything I didn't know I needed. He told me to get dressed up and ready, that he wanted to take me to see Cinderella. It was amazing. It may have appeared that I was alone, but surely I was not. After, he took me for hot chocolate at the coffee shop, where we then sat on the balcony and read. It was magical. I've never, ever experienced anything like that in my life. It was a daddy-daughter date I always wanted, to feel loved and known by my father, a date perfectly created for me, 
forever grateful for the space and freedom to do that. This weekend was beyond what I ever thought it would be. I finally confidently heard God's voice. Women who heard Jesus, women who repented. This one, thank you for showing me that though my story isn't like any fairy tale, God has one for me. He is my father, and I do have a family. I am worthy of love, and he has never left me. Wow is the only word I have. Praise be to God. John, you and I have been dropping in these at UK, Scotland, Ireland basics. Um, I don't have a, a specific story, although we've got amazing feedback from people after that. But what I'm just struck by is the diversity of men that are encountering this message. I mean, from guys that are just out of addiction in Scotland to very put together group of British guys to Northern Ireland. And the, the thing that they all have in common is that someone on the other side of the globe invited them to come to a basic. Mm-hmm. And we're dropping in mostly like uh, the equivalent of like the Saturday night session. And so they've been in the content for a couple of days at that point. And the impact that it's having on their lives is just like, it's, it's remarkable. These are guys that, you know, they're never going to end up in a seat at Crooked Creek Ranch in Colorado. And yet this message is being taken into their world and they're having the same experience that they would have here. Playful story. Um, I never know what's going to come across my desk at any given day. I got a letter probably a couple months ago now from an elderly lady in Flint, Michigan. And she is writing because the newsletters have spoken so deeply to her that she has started making copies and giving them to people that she knows that it's she goes to the library and makes mm-hmm. copies. And so she was asking for clean copies because she takes notes and underlines things. And she wanted to give her friends, her family, fresh, clean copies without her notes. And it was clear from what little I knew that explaining to her how she could access the newsletters on the website was not going to be (laughs) fruitful. (laughs) So she was asking for the copies of the newsletters through the pandemic up until current. And that if we could please send those to her so she could make copies that are fresh. And then she sent a $25 check to pay for our trouble and the postage. And so, of course, I went back and printed all the copies for her, mailed them, and felt like God saying, just send her the money back. And so I I sent the check back and said, that was really sweet of you, but it was no trouble. We're happy to do this. You know, use your $25 for (laughs) something else in your life. And then that was that. I mean, that was a, you know, a five minute thing, get that out the door. And I got a letter back from her a few weeks later, thanking me for the copies. She sent the check back and she said, (laughs) I didn't know this but I've been hurt by Christian ministries who wanted my money. And the fact that I sent her check back and just said, here's what you wanted, just take it, like healed something within her. (laughs) And then she sent the check back saying, I really want to invest in your ministry. (laughs) Isn't it good for your soul, friends, just to hear that? It's so encouraging and it, and, it, and it produces a lot of longing as well of, oh, Jesus, yes, work in my life yes. in those ways. Mm-hmm. Were there any favorites for you? Oh, yeah. I mean, they were all so good. But, but the grandmother who reached out to Jamie and was talking about photocopying the newsletter at the library at the library and and passing those out by hand physical copies yes because her copy was too marked up and she didn't want to take that one 
And I, yeah, I just to imagine a woman doing that, the tender heart she has, the passion she has. Yes. And it's it's you know, we think about books being passed around. It's it's the newsletter yeah. every month. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't know. We didn't, you know, I write those most months and and you don't know. Is it is it reaching? Is it speaking? Is it helping? Yes. And then we hear these beautiful things like that. The the stories out of Anne's sons reaching a whole new generation. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love that. What was one of your favorites? Well, the beautiful outlaw story. Yeah. I mean, First off, like if she's listening today, our, our deepest condolences again to yes. you, the yes. loss of your precious husband of 37 years. Oof. Yeah. Grief is a journey, and may Christ continue to meet you there, heal your heart, give you hope of your reunion. Mm-hmm. And, and then, like, it was just in May that a colleague gave her right beautiful outlaw that just did such wonderful things you couldn't you couldn't hear it in the reading but in her letter to us when she said this changes everything it was in all caps right <laughs> and it does it does to meet to meet the real jesus so that and then and then to go wait 40 copies you've You've already bought and passed out 40 copies. Like that's only a few months ago. It's wild. It's so beautiful. Um, friends, I I hope this is rich for you. It's sure rich for us because I I don't know that I love anything more in the world than redemption. I, mean, I love God and I love his redemption in people's lives. And when you hear stories of redemption, the stories from the recent captivating retreat. Yes. And and we've had a really big year here at Wild at Heart. In the spring, we were able to launch online the new Wild at Heart and Captivating Experiences, mm-hmm. six-part beautiful film series. Yes. And thanks to the generosity of my publisher and, and working it out with them, we were able to put them online for free. Yes. And then now the Becoming a King experience, you know, the podcast that we're doing. We launched Stacy's new podcast right. this fall, Captivated, if you didn't know about that, a new podcast for women. So many things. And here, here's what we want to share with you, friends. We are a crowdfunded nonprofit, and we do all of this work because of the phenomenal generosity of our friends. Mm. And I wanted to invite you to invest in the beauty of this redemption, but I needed you to hear the stories first, friends, because it's not just, hey, we could show you some help. Hey, can you help us, you know, keep the lights on? We do need help keeping the lights on, but I wanted you to hear the redemption, to hear the scope of it, the number the number of our allies that are leading events all around the world. Like we are reaching a lot of human hearts. And John, some of the reaching is is those allies who are running with it and, and doing these incredible events with the content we have. Others, it's like they're about to go under and and they need that rescue. And, yes. and gosh, a few months ago, I was walking to my truck after work. It was late. A guy pulls up in a garage door repair van, and I thought he was coming to repair our back garage door. Yeah. And he stops and he says, is this wild at heart? And I said, yes. And he said, I just had to give somebody this. And he hands me an envelope that has a couple of pictures of him parked by the this outdoor wooded area. And he said, this is where I was when I accidentally stumbled across a podcast from Wild at Heart. And I was at my wit's end. I was about to give up on everything. And he was in tears telling me this yeah. in our parking lot. And he's not, we would have never gotten probably a, a correspondence from him, but he wanted to come in person and yeah. tell us. And those are the stories too. Yeah. And we could tell, we could tell hundreds more. So friends, he, here's our ask here in the beginning of November, if you could help, if you could invest in this and so many of you do and we're so grateful thank you and this is kind of the time of year we mm-hmm. we we do raise a lot of our budget for the year so we can pay our bills and keep the redemptive 
beauty going. So there's a couple of ways you can give, a couple of ways you can invest in this work. You can get online at our website, wildatheart.org. We wanted to get .com because it was so familiar to the world. You just say .com, .com, you know. But it, that is owned by a flower shop in England. And <laughs> despite all of our wooing, they did not want to let go of that. No. So we are .org, which is true to us because that's a nonprofit kind of address. Um, or you can get on our app, uh, the Wild at Heart app now. we That was one of the re renovations of this year was we made giving available on the app. Yes. So we would love your support. We would love for you to become our partners or to continue as our partners in those stories. Yes. There's a lot more of those stories that need to unfold in the world. There's a lot of hearts that need rescue and love, healing, and to know that we are bringing Jesus to people. Mm. It is just, it's everything. So this is our big ask. We don't do it often, um, but we'd sure love your help. So you can give on the website or on the app, or you can drop by <laughs> <laughs> if you are in your van and re repairing garage doors, <laughs> you can drop by. Friends, thank you. I, I sure hope those stories are encouraging to you and that something from one of those stories stays with you this week as encouragement and, and also as possibility. Yeah. Thank you for your generosity. We're so grateful. 